So I realize that some parts of this video may not interest some people, but I do have a really good section of knurling on this, and I'm going to timestamp that and put it down in the description so you can skip right to that part. Also, if you hear a hiss in the background on the video, it sounds something like this. It's not your speakers. It's a baby monitor that I have down there with me. Uh, it's just something we're going to have to deal with for the time being. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hello and welcome back to the shop. So first of all, if you saw my last video, Patreon for me is done, not doing it. It didn't work out, so we're just moving on from there. As the title of this video says, we're going to start a project series of videos of building a prop from the Ghostbusters movie. That prop being the Ghostbusters trap. Now why am I doing this is kind of because I really like that movie. And next year, I believe in July, there's going to be a new one. And it's going to be directed by the son of the original director. And also, I wanted a good project for that would combine the machining stuff and also the, my new 3D printer. And this seemed like a good fit for that. So the plan for this project is to build a fully working, fully functional uh, hero trap. Basically the one that they do the close-ups on. So it's going <clears> to <throat> be fully animated. So... The doors are going to open, there's going to be lights inside, there's going to be sounds, and there's actually going to be smoke, just like the movie. And also, I'm going to try to incorporate as many real-world parts into it as possible. There are many resources out there, and I was able to track down most of the real-world parts that they used on that trap and get them. In the next videos, when we talk about those parts, I'll actually put the part numbers and everything uh, in, a, in a link in the description. And so you can go through all those. Now this is not something that you really have to do unless you want to do it. Because this trap is fully 3D printable except for a few pieces here and there. Basically the hoses and the relay that sits on the side. But everything in there is 3D printable and you don't need any real world parts or any metal parts at all to, to be honest. Uh, we're just doing this because I want as realistic a one as possible. So all the files for this trap are freely available online. And this was designed by Sean Charlesworth, who you may have seen if you follow the Tested channel, which is Adam Savage's YouTube channel. Uh, he's been on that and was there, won the Inventor in Contest. Now since all these 3D print files and basically this build is all Sean's IP and his ideas, I contacted him to make sure that this video was okay to make and I told him the ideas that I wanted to do and he was okay with it. The only, the only thing he said to do to make sure I need to do is put <clears throat> in a link in the description of the video and I'll probably throw one around up here somewhere uh, to his website with the, the plans for the build and also a link to his Etsy store which was something I was going to have to do, I was going to do anyway because I actually bought some stuff from him on Etsy that I couldn't find. Now I have zero affiliation with Sean whatsoever. I bought these, he did not give these to me. This project is not advertisement for him whatsoever. This is something that I wanted to do. So I'm just getting that out of the way right now. Now the one thing that I can't do and that he sells on his Etsy store is he sells a guide for installing all the electronics of the trap which you're probably going to need. Now he has the first about 15 pages of this available on his website for free which you can find in the link in the description and that will point you to every part that he used in the build. Now because of this, because he is selling this guide and this guide is what I am using to put the electronics into this trap, I cannot go step by step through it. But what I can do is I can show you any kind of roadblocks I run into or any hiccups in actually putting the electronics in the trap and my workarounds for those and also any troubleshooting that I'm going to have to do which I'm uh, judging by the amount of stuff that's going in there. I'm assuming I'm going to have to do quite a bit. So pretty much that's the plan. Now as far as today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to make some parts that are kind of pretty much unobtainable and modify a couple of other ones. And in the next video, when we actually start to talk about these real-world pots that are on the ghost trap, uh, I will put make a list to it and throw that up online 
so that you can get with the actual part numbers of each one of these parts so you can track them down. Some of them are really, really hard to find and some of them are actually available on Sean's Etsy store. He doesn't have all of them because some of them are super hard to find. So what we're going to, why don't we go to the bench here and we'll take a look at what we're going to have to make. Okay, so we're going to have to make a few things um, that are completely unobtainable or very, very hard to find. One of them is the knob on the side. Now, you can actually buy this from Sean on his website, but I figured, hell, we can make that in the lathe. So, it's basically an aluminum knurled knob with a pointer on the side, and this sits on a stud in the side of the trap there. So, we're going to make this, and I'll show you how to knurl that pattern and get the pattern correct. The other thing we're going to have to make is a banjo fitting. So this is a hydraulic fitting in real life with a hydraulic hose or something that goes in here. This bolt would be uh, hollow and the fluid would go through here into the bolt and down into whatever it's screwed in. So you can get replica ones of these on online also uh, but you know what? Simple enough to make so we made one. Also I actually found a real one of these and uh, I think the price on it was like 60 bucks or something. It was something ridiculous. And also, um, when I do the part numbers of all these real world parts in an in a upcoming video, this part number still exists. It just doesn't look anything like this. It's made out of plastic and it's this big bulky thing. So this is more or less completely unobtainable. These little guys are going to be holding hoses that are going to be on the pedal side of the trap. Now I bought, you only need one, but I bought two just in case. And I needed one for a 532nd hose to fit actually one of the hoses. These are some of the things I actually bought from Sean, uh, which were the hoses because I didn't need 9,000 feet of hoses and these LED covers which I couldn't find anywhere. But anyway, um, the hole in these originally was eighth inch which obviously 532nd hose won't fit through. So we're going to have to pop these grommets out here, find out a way to kind of get them in the lathe to get them straight and then drill them with a 532nd screw there. So that's what we're going to do. So there's some mill work, some lathe work, and a little bit of drilling. And uh, why don't we go to it? We'll start with this, we'll head on to these, and then we'll drill these out last. Okay, so I have a piece of one inch aluminum in the collet chuck. It's already faced off. And this is going to be our knob, which is three quarters of an inch in diameter and knurled. I could have started off with a piece of three quarter, but I only have one inch line around, so we're going to use that. I'm using the collet chuck because I'm going to be swapping this pot, pot between the lathe and the mill, so this gives me a very easy way to do that. So what we need to do is basically turn this outside diameter down to three quarters of an inch. But we're knurling this, so we have to calculate for that knurl. So the knurling tool I'm going to be using is one of these Armstrong, you know, normal three size knurling tools. You see these everywhere. And it's labeled as coarse, medium, and fine for the pitch. I think it's 14, 22, and 33 or something like that. Something along those lines. Anyway, we're going to be using the fine, which is a 33 pitched knurl wheel. And I'll show you how to set this up when we go ahead and do that. Uh, as you can tell, this is set up for a lantern tool post and I'll have to be using that to use this tool. Um, I don't, my tool holders on my quick change cannot take this at the moment, they're too wide, so making a tool holder for this, and you know, it's another project down the road. So basically what we need to do is we need to find out what diameter we have to turn this down to. When you knurl, depending on what the pitch diameter of this is, determines what size uh, you can turn your stock down to, because as these wheels rotate around your pot, there, it's a diamond knurl, so it's one's angled this way and one is angled this way, and they track and make a diamond knurl. You don't want these knurls to double track themselves, otherwise the knurl will look, kind of look like crap. So there's only specific diameters where this will work. So the way you find that out is you take your knurl pitch, which in our case is 33, multiply that by pi, that'll give you a number, in our case 103.67. So we're going to take our diameter that we want, which is 3 quarters of an inch, so 0.750. We're going to multiply that by 
103.67, the number that we just got, and we're going to come out with 77.752. So we're going to get rid of these decimals, throw those away for now. We're going to take 77, and we're going to divide that number by that 103.67, and that is going to give us 0.7427. We can round that up to 0.743. So we want to turn our stock down to 743 thousandths, and what that will allow us to do is when we knurl that, that will allow us to get a perfect diamond knurl and not over track our knurl. So let's go ahead and turn this down to diameter. So we're at one inch now. We're just going to touch off, set zero. We'll just take off a hundred thousand for now. Set my feed. Okay, check our diameter here. I think I got a chip welded onto that insert. 748 is what I got now. And caliper dimensions are perfectly fine for what we're doing. So we'll speed up for this final pass. And let's see where we are at. 743 on the nose. Okay, so now we can start our knurling operation. So all I'm going to do right now is take off this uh, quick change tool post. And I'm going to install my lantern tool post. And I'll show you how to set this up. Okay, just trying to get you as far up to center line on this lathe as possible. I might be a little bit off, so there may be a little bit of a difference in the camera view than what I'm actually seeing. So... What we want to do is obviously select our, the neurals that we're going to use, which is going to be these two right here. And what I'm going to do is just eyeball this perpendicular to the workpiece for the time being. What I'm worried about getting right now is my actual height set. So even though this can pivot, we want to get this as on center line as possible. The easiest way to do that is to use this pin here and eyeball the center of this to the center of that pin and you can get that pretty accurate. You can also push this pin forward. I push the whole cross slide forward here and line this pin up at the center of this and eyeball this round area, the gap around it, and you can get pretty accurate. So uh, just to let you guys see, I'm gonna go ahead and pivot this. I'm gonna eyeball this perpendicular for the time being. And what we're looking for is this pin to be on center with the center of the work. So right in that neighborhood there somewhere. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to get as close as you can. So it would look a little low to me there. And that right there doesn't look too bad. So I'm just going to move the camera and stick my head there and fine tune it. Okay, I got you in there for a little bit of a better view. So I have this eyeballed perpendicular to the workpiece. Now, I have the tool post nut snug. What we're gonna do is actually put this lathe in the lowest speed possible. So I'm gonna put it into back gear. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly come up and I'm gonna touch until both those rollers are engaged. 
and I'm gonna let it make a little tiny track. So what I'm looking for in that track, I'm gonna give it just a little bit of pressure, is I'm looking at the two lines that that track is gonna make and I'm gonna I'm looking for them to kind of meet in the middle and make that diamond pattern if it's a little long on this side then I can tap it over and if it's a little long on the other side I can tap it in the other direction and we can get those little V's that you're seeing there to kind of meet up in the middle and actually it looks pretty close to me you can see it and you see them meeting right about there I don't know how well it shows up on the camera there but to my eyes, they meet right about there, so maybe it's a little bit on this side, but you know what, if I start whacking that around, I'm probably going to screw it up more than it is, so. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call that good. I'm actually going to leave that there. Okay. I'm just feeding by hand. You can power feed this and we'll just go a little at a time. Okay, that looks like a nice pointed diamond knurl in there. Uh, I'll get a better close-up picture of this actually, just so you can see what it looks like. So we're pretty good there. I'm gonna do one track all the way through and then we'll retract and we're done. Okay, so now I got a parting blade in here and we're gonna come in about maybe three quarters of the width of that parting blade. It's nothing really special and we're gonna make a little undercut through the knurling. We're going to go about maybe 25 thousandths deep. It's more for show. It's nothing really particularly. Alright, some touch in there. Here's 25 thousandths. Uh, maybe a hair deeper. We'll say... There's 30. Let's see how we like that. A little bit deeper. So there's 40 thousandths. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That doesn't look too bad. So that's below the knurling, and you catch a finger there, but it's not a huge edge. Put a hole in the center. So that's going to be about a half an inch deep, and it's going to be quarter inch in diameter. I'm going to drill this, actually speed up the lathe.
there's a half inch. So now let me change the camera angle and what I'm going to do is just relieve the center by maybe maybe a hundred thousandths deep and uh, just make a nice little flat spot in the bottom. That, that way there when the, you put the rotary switch on there uh, it'll be able to clear the nut on the outside of it. Okay, so it's going to come in here and this is just arbitrary, you know. There we go. Not too bad. Okay, so I have my piece mounted in my collet block. And what we're going to do is drill the two set screws that are going to be 90 degrees apart from each other. And we're going to make a slot that's going to act as our pointer. And we're going to use that with the, do that with a slitting saw. And so right now what I need to do is get this spindle axis on center with this piece. So, we're using the little center finder. I'm sure all you guys have seen this, so when you touch near a piece, it'll go straight, and then as soon as it kicks off, that is your edge. And then, um, so we're going to find the edge of this part here and here, and then we're going to half that reading that'll get us in the middle. Now, since this is round, and it's kind of hard to reach on the sides of a round pot, it's in the jaws. This is perfectly in the middle of everything, so we're just going to edge find these two jaws, divide by two, and that'll get us smack dab in the middle. Obviously doing this with our DRO that you can't see up in this right hand corner. So, bring the spindle down here, lock it, start up our mill, pick a jaw. that reading. Now we're going to come over to the other side here. Come down until we're in line with that piece. And we're going to edge find this edge and then we're going to come in half the distance of this uh, touching surface here, which is, is 200 thousandths. So we're going to come in 100 thousandths. That'll be, make this spindle directly in line with this edge. And then we're going to track over 300 thousandths. So basically I'm going to touch and move over 400 thousandths. zeroed my readout and we move over 400 thousandths. Now we're going to center drill which we definitely want to do since we're on a round surface here. I don't have a tap for right now because I thought I did, but apparently mine's broken. What we're going to do is 
Just drill that hole and then I can tap it later. Okay, through. And that is it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this collet out and I'm going to put in that slitting saw. First, right now, we are going to index this 90 degrees one more time, and that's where we're going to put our slot. Okay, for anybody that doesn't know, uh, we're going to be running the slitting saw slow, so I'm going to be putting it in back gear. So to change into back gear on a bridge port, first you switch this lever to the right. Okay, then you take this little knob, pull it out. You may have to spin the spindle a little bit and get that into its next slot and now that is in back gear now because it's in back gear the rotation is reversed so we actually have to run our mill in reverse to get it to go into forward so um, now we just need to set the height of our cutter okay so I gotta get on center height of this so what I'm gonna do is it doesn't have to be supremely accurate so what I'm doing is just bringing the cutter down until we touch, okay, I'm going to lock the quill down there, and I'm going to set zero on my knee, and what we're going to do is we are going to come down half of the diameter of our part and plus half the diameter of our cutter, and we should be pretty much on center line. So for me that's 402 thousandths, so there's one, two, three, there's 400, one and two. Okay. I'm going to slowly come in, just until we touch. Alright, I can hear the ding 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 of the cutter touching. I'm gonna set zero on my DRO here. And you're gonna come in 25 thousandths and see how that looks like. Okay, there's 25. Actually looks pretty good I'm gonna leave that there okay so now we're gonna pot this off I just measured out to where I need to be and that's right on that mark there right there so what I'm gonna do what I need to do is I'm gonna plunge in until I meet this cut here and then I'm gonna move over about the same as this three-quarters of the width of this parting tool and then we're gonna part it off Uh, should be close right there Let's see okay so that disappeared and then we're gonna move to there and then I'm gonna start my part off from there now this switch had a very slight dome surface 
So what I'm gonna do is go down a little bit, move over, go down a little bit, move over. Pretty much there is our knob and I'm going to see if I can blend this little steps into a slight dome. Alright, so I'm just going to work this with some files and some sandpaper and see if I can achieve that slight dome shape. So nothing really cool to see here, we'll just see if we can get that. Okay, so there it is, I just emphasized the slot with a little bit of uh, Sharpie and I don't know if you can see the slightly curved face there. Set screw hole, set screw hole, I just need to tap those. And there's our recess. All in all, pretty good. Not too bad.